Geist was one of my, my favorite clubs just yeah. because yeah. Uh, why, why, why is that Charlie? Why is that Charlie? <laughs> why? Hey, why is it free promo for this man every time? Yeah. 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 I scored my every first time. professional oh, nice. league goals yeah. against Geist and I had my first hat trick. He told oh, me they built a statue for him. Too, yeah. They yeah. built yeah. a statue for him over there on the side. Outside the club downtown South there's a statue of Charlie, absolutely. I believe that boy. Yeah, 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 outside the club. What's up, everybody? New episode, new guest, Marcus Samuelson. So good to have you with us. I am so excited to be here. Like, I love two things beside my family. I love cooking, of course, and then I love football, soccer. Like, every weekend when my wife asks me, let's have a good weekend. I was like, it's Friday, I don't even know yet. You know, it's all based on Arsenal, so yeah. I don't know. <laughs> based around the fixes, based yes, around the yeah, games. Yes, yes. So you're a celebrity Wireless. chef, you own a number of restaurants, yeah. right? You've got, what have you got? Vegas, New York, Miami, Atlanta, Wherever you want to go Bahamas, and we got you. Montreal. <laughs> yeah. You're living yeah. good. Yep, yep, things are good. I'm, I'm very, very appreciative for, you know, coming here as an immigrant and, and coming here with no money and being able to uh, build a team and to be able to grow and build some restaurant and have some fun. What particular genre of restaurants, or what are you covering? Delicious restaurants, <laughs> where you want to come back to. Okay. Uh, and we want to celebrate and feel good. You know, uh, you know, we started with Red Rooster in Harlem. That's now going on 12 years. We have a beautiful restaurant on the west, uh, west side in uh, Manhattan called Havmar, and a gorgeous brand new restaurant downtown. Uh, called Metropolis, which is stunning. So I'm very, very excited about that. You know when you're with people and you're sharing a dinner or something and you watch somebody eat and they kind of like, there are those people that inhale that food, yeah. right? Do you judge those kind of people when they're eating? Does it feel like they don't really you appreciate know, I, the I fine I give arts? love to them because it means that they are excited <laughs> to be here. As a chef, nothing makes you happier to see like, uh, Play clean. Just, yeah, exactly. You can get into it. You, you well, just like plates soccer. clean in like 30 seconds. Yeah, but don't you want people to fans? But don't you want people to savor the food? Like actually, because these two sure. eat as if they're racing. Sure. No, Clint's sure. not sure. so bad. Yeah, he is. I, I, they're in competition. I, I, I honestly push him to be a little bit faster than I think he normally is. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, for me, I grew up African father, yeah. and you have to what, eat. What Nigerian? It. What, what about Gambian? Gambia. And everything on the Ooh. plate had to be finished, so yep. that's one. Yep. Two, if I wanted to go outside, I wanted to play, I wanted to do anything, I had to finish my food, so I got to a, into a habit of just finishing all of my food as quick as I could so I could yes, go back yeah. out. And you guys have, I mean, Gambia, Gambia, Senegal, you guys actually, it's one of the biggest dishes from Africa come from your father's country, um, jollof rice, which all of West Africa claims, but it actually come from Senegambia when they were one country. And it's, uh, it's Mo basically... Mo was about to claim it for Nigeria. Yeah, Nigeria's <laughs> always, 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 We got always, the best always. one. It's, uh, it's known. It's always, it's, uh, yeah. it's always Ghana uh, it's in or Ghana, Nigeria, right? It's, it's kind of like, a, imagine a big paella. Yeah. Uh, but it ha also has some uh, really good, um, more root vegetables and it's heartier, but that come from that, that whole region. So your background is Nigerian? Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. What, yeah. what tribe? Uh, well, my mom, she's from, you won't even know the names. Uh, I've been to Nigeria. Don't let it okay. what I know. Oh, 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 okay. Hey, okay. man, hey, hey, yo, man, yo. come on. Yeah, okay. Okay. I'm, I'm hey, just, put some respect go. on his no, name. No. <laughs> Ibibio? Huh? Ibibio. No, I don't. See, it's like... Ibo, I do know. Ibo. Yeah, that's one that everyone knows. Yeah. But it's like, uh, the, the area is called Cross River Strait. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. Have you been so there? So you have, you have, twice. then, Igusi. You know about Igusi, Igusi of soup, course. Yeah. Of course. And your Nigeria has really a lot of good, you know, the peanuts on top of the... That the the street food in Nigeria is amazing. Mm -hmm. right? Have you spent a lot of time in Africa? Yes. Okay. I travel all over Africa for cooking, all over. I, I know that sounds dumb, but so you were born in Ethiopia, but yeah. you actually only spent was it the first two years of your life there? Is that right? Yeah, and then I came back to shoot and cook and travel. So you've only ever been back what as an adult? Is that more so the yes. case? Yes. Which um, you know, I, my sister, me and my sister, we got adopted together. We were we were born in, I was born in Hut. In, Ethiopia, a couple of hours outside the, the capital. And I was just so busy working, so I, I don't think I was really ready to see that side of myself. I was like busy working, grinding. My sister just texted me, we need to go back. And I was like 24, 25 when that happened. I was like, I don't have time. She's like, no, we need to go back. And uh, she's been digging for a long time and she found out that our biological father was alive. Mm. And she's like, he's getting older, and this is the time, this is our chance to see him. So that was when I went back to Ethiopia with her. 
met so, my biological father, uh -huh. didn't know I had eight half sisters and wow. brothers. And, and I saw the hut, I saw the hut when I was born and it was incredible. Were you a little frightened, like to go back? Like, yes. it's not so much that you were busy, but it's dealing with the, the unknown. Yeah, no, it, it was all of that. And that hut, I mean, I still go back and it's like, it gives me strength, because I know when we go through rough times here and we complain about, oh, my sneaker's not right, or whatever small thing we're complaining about, right? You measure that against coming from that hut, surviving. Obviously, I was very fortunate and lucky. Our mom, uh, we had tuberculosis. Our mom walked us from the village into the capital, not only walked us in there, found a hospital. You and your sister both me had and my tuber sister, tuberculosis. Uh, and my mom, she passed away. And then again, this is where we got lucky, right? Like the nurse at the hospital, when we were cured, she just said, these two kids, I'm not putting them back on the street. I'm gonna take them in. So she broke the law, she just took us. Wow. Uh, fed us, loved on us, set us up for adoption. And that's how I went from Casa Home uh -huh. to Marcus Samson. And I went from coming from the warmest country in the world to the coldest country in the world, you know? You're not lying there. Yeah, no, but you guys know, it's, it's, it's um, our journeys. Everyone sits on, you have an amazing journey. We all have stories, you know, so journeys. So when you went back, did you feel disconnected from, from that part of yourself, like that, from your, from your Ethiopian culture? Because you no. left it to, no. You must have been surrounded by a Swedish family though, right? Rather you know, than by your Ethiopian you know, culture. To be honest, you know this. The blessing of being black is that you get reminded of your shit every day from people not always in the nicest way, especially growing up. So you're always connected. Mm. If you feel good about your day, trust me, there is a, <laughs> there's a yo one that's putting your shit down. Do you know what I mean? But that's just how, it, you know, I wasn't upset about that. It was just, it gives you grit. It gives me, you know, you come from a rough background and that, that's your narrative and this has helped you on the field, right? So it's not about complaining where you're from. This is my journey, this one's my path. And I don't think I would have been, I, I know I couldn't have been as successful and when my drive comes from, come from that time. You think you'd, you'd have been the football fan that you are had you grown up in Ethiopia? Even more. Oh, really? Even more. Arsenal is all the way in Ethiopia. <laughs> there is, I mean, Africa. I'm I mean, so think sick about, of Arsenal. Why is there so much Arsenal? What Arsene? you mad about? Let us enjoy Why, Arsenal. Shouldn't you be a Malmo fan? Is, shouldn't that Absolutely be your team? Absolutely not. <laughs> I grew up in Gotham. Oh, my God. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. Malmo, appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You didn't pick up any Swedish sports like handball when you were. <laughs> How many Ethiopian handball players? Like I tried that stuff, that just crushed me. Do you know? Do you know what handball is? Uh, I've seen it. It's basically yeah. Yeah. Where, it's where they throw, really the jump, throw the ball in the goal. You'd be really good at it, but it's not. Why? Because like... he's aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Yeah. 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 Why y'all do me yeah, like that? No, no. But uh, it's a fun sport. How many steps can you take? Huh? Can you take a three, a three, three, right? I one, think so. Just bounce and then, yeah, yeah you, you shoot, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you play? Well, Hammerby had a good yeah. handball team, so I got to go watch them a bunch in, in Stockholm. But did you play? For fun, with the guys. Yeah. And how were you? Um, I was okay. You can play on the wing, but you can no, play on the wing. Yeah, those guys are. The guys that are tall yeah, yeah. and they have like all this, this force, they can jump and just whip it. <laughs> it wasn't for me. <laughs> <laughs> did you play football then? Soccer? Yes. Of course. You did. Soccer, I mean, the whole thing for me has been, soccer is, I've really only tried two things in my life, cooking and soccer. So I always Which say- Which were you better at? In my gut, I'm a better soccer player, <laughs> but in reality, I'm a better, a better chef, okay. right? And, you know, I, I coach everything. The way I lead my crew, the way I lead my team is everything from, I'm still that soccer player, you know, there's so many realities between, uh, so many similarities between being in the kitchen and being in the locker room, like in the team, the soccer team, you listen to coach, you have your team, it's you against whoever you, you, you battling with. Cooking is the same thing. It's a, you stick together, you listen to chef, it's humbling, it's rewarding. By the end of the night, you like, you celebrate together. It, it's very much, and, and I would say on the negative side, um, the day I got cut, I live forget it. It's the only time in my life where I actually had a, a personal crisis because I didn't, I didn't know where to go. 
Well, so we've got, what kind of level are we talking at this point? No, I played with guys. We traveled. We, we played. We played. Um, you, you said you were a midfielder. What yeah. kind of midfielder were you? Describe how C you were. C central midfield. I got to get box the ball. Box to box. Box to box. Got to get the ball. I mean, like I said, Scholes was like one of the guys that I always looked up to and really study how he moved and all that stuff. So you played on the first team at guys? Not not at the, at the B second. I was, okay. I was going up to A and then got cut. Okay. And, um, you know, we had the biggest youth tournament in the world, uh, Gotia Cup. Yeah. Played in that. Went to Dallas Cup, which I'm sure yeah, you guys have hey, played it, right? Yeah. Played at that, met Pelé there, you know, like this big, big thing playing against, you know, the Brazilian, all the teams that you play against. Yep. So for me, soccer was my path, right? It was my friends, it was everything. So when you get cut, that loss, I didn't, you don't I know where you're going next. I didn't go to school. I was staying in my room. My parents were like, you got to come out of your room. I couldn't get them out of my room. I, I, I just didn't know how to deal. I, I, I felt embarrassed going back to school. I, I, I had no clue what to do. Had so you believed like that was your future? I only, the only thing I was interested in. What, so the, what age were you? 16. Okay. So 16. that was like real depression for you at that yeah. time. Yeah, I think I played until I was 17, something like that. It was really rough. And then I got a chance actually to, to leave to go to Japan and and, uh, and uh, kind of try out cooking with the family. And I thought it was so good just to leave to get out because I didn't have to deal with my friends. Right. I didn't have to deal with people asking so, me. So what, where did that passion come from for cooking? There was that, when you went back to Ethiopia, did you say that mm -hmm. everybody loved to cook? Mm -hmm. Or is it more it was my Swedish, Sweden? It was my Swedish grandmother. And uh, at that point, I started to have like weekend jobs and they were all in restaurants. And the same energy I had on the field I could actually take out in the kitchen. And then I became really good at it. I didn't know I was good at it. I was just like doing what people told me to do. But I, you know, it's the same thing. It's work ethic. You show up, you work harder than the person next to you. So those things were easy for me. That was like soccer. Okay, you got to work out twice a day. Okay, no problem. You got to be better than this guy. No problem. You know, it's like the same thing that you guys did, right? Like it's, you got to out hustle people. You, you didn't know you were good at it? At what point did you know you were good at it? Uh, once I came back from Japan and I got a scholarship to go to Switzerland, now I was like 18, cooking, and I had to do it not speaking good German, not speaking good French, but I, I knew I could like multitask. Like I can now work in Europe, not just in my hometown in some mm. sloppy cafe. I was at this incredible place, having two, three languages going through my head and still hanging, right? Beyond the passion for both cooking and, and football, you like the competitive nature yeah, of it, right? Yeah, definitely number one. So were you, like, what kind of, what was your personality like on the field, and then that carry on to cooking as well? Like, are you in the, like, talking shit back and forth with people, or, like, what was that like for you? Like a Gordon I was Ramsey. most, not <laughs> always, but most of the time, the captains. You have to be organized and structured right. and bring everybody with you. You can't get involved with everything, because at the end of the day, you got to win. Yeah. And it's the same thing being a chef. Stuff is happening constantly. And you just got, end of the day, we got to get through this. We got to get the food out at a certain level. I got to speak to customers. We got to work with purveyors. This staff person is not working with that staff person. There's 50 things going on, right? Yeah. And you got to kind of stay in the middle and, and not overreact to any of this stuff. And you have to do it at the highest level. And you have to, so I, I still work out almost every day the same way I've worked out when I was a soccer player, okay. right? So you, you just have to stay disciplined. Why and wanted that more than you? the person next to you, you know what I mean? Why is that important to you, to work out like that? Uh, well, first of all, cooking is, is supposed to craft, but it also takes a lot out of your body. And um, so in order for me, this is a long career, like right? soccer play maybe for 12, 14, 15 years. Uh, cooking is all your life. So if you're going to do it at the highest level, you have to take care of your body. Cooking is not a normal profession, right? There's alcohol available at your job every day, right? That's just not a normal profession, right? So I've seen a lot of my really good friends um, not be here anymore or not operating at the level that they should because there's been drugs and, and, and alcohol involved. So I'm like, if you're gonna do this, and again, this is where I have to say blackness is such an advantage because you know you're not gonna get a lot of shots. If you get your shot, step up and do it. it gives, for me, it gives me focus. No excuses and focus. That's really what it does. Do you feel like you're judged differently as a black chef? Well, I felt I was judged differently as a black player. Because mm. just how we receive the ball, what we, how we move with the ball is just different. It just is. You know, how you, right. rhythmically, how you see the game and how you play the game. So dealing with that, with coaches that didn't understand what you were doing, they were like, back then was like, kick the ball up. Oh. To the, to the forward, and you're like, you want to, 
you know, you want to move. How many other black players were at, at Geis with you while you were oh there? Oh my God, it was. Um, like you could count on one hand? Yeah, I remember one day there was a Colombian kid coming in. That was a big deal. Um, the, the players that played like us was the Slavic guys for, from former Yugoslavia, for Bosnian kids, Croatian kids, because then, you know, there was one, it was Yugoslavia, it was one. So a lot of those people came to Sweden to work for Volvo. So their kids, um, they were the ones with kind of like the, you know, the moves and right. playing similar. And then we had some Chilean kids too, some South Americans. And they also had, you know, you know, yeah. you played in Stockholm, you know yeah. what it looked like. The, and, and typically those groups would like, there's a group of Eritreans that yeah. always were together, Gambians. Yeah. yeah. And the immigrants that came, they all kind of stuck together. Yeah. And formed one like happy family in Sweden yeah. versus kind of the rest of the population. Yeah. Yeah. But Geis was one of my, my favorite clubs just yeah. because. Yeah. How many times did you score? Why is it free promo man? Tell us, Charlie. Yeah. Hey, 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 I scored my first time. professional oh, league man. goals against Geis and I had my first hat trick. He told oh, me they first hat trick too, man. Yeah. They yeah. 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 Outside the club downtown Stockholm, there's a statue of Charlie, absolutely. I believe that boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Outside the club. You know. Brought up NYCFC. I know Claudio Reyna was there. You guys ever? You guys are good friends, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did you guys come to meet each other? Like, how did that come about? I meet everybody through the restaurant. Okay. And you know, just low, knowing. Just Him coming into your restaurant. Yeah, I think we met. I met Claudio that way. I mean, I met mo the 95% of people I meet. I meet through the restaurant or out and about. And being a big soccer fan, of course, I I remember their run. And I loved watching him play. Yeah. I mean, he being Argentinian and rooting for Gio, for example. I'm so, I remember when he got signed to Dortmund and texting Claudio back and forth. And Claudio, you know, when it was NYC. But of course, do you remember when he didn't get played at the World Cup? <laughs> 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 no, I'm just interested. No. I'm interested. Keep stirring the pot. You must okay? have been, no, but you must have been watching that, thinking, yes. man, what's happening? Yeah, but no, I mean, it's it, it. I think now they have such a shot because right now those young fellas are playing in teams that they're actually playing. Like versus playing, in, I thought you were really smart going to Fulham, you played versus playing at a bigger level and, and maybe not play as much, right? So now they're playing, it's great to see that uh, Pulisic is playing, it's, it's amazing to see that Juve has two Americans, like it's, and they're playing, because mm. otherwise it doesn't matter their name, if they're not playing, they're not playing. You're not that's gonna, it. Yeah, not that's, develop. Yeah. When you, when you look at that team, right, because you've cooked mm -hmm. for, an esteemed list of player of yeah. people, not even just players. Who's the one like that you look at that team? You're like, you know what? If I had a chance to cook for this person, I'd want to. Wait, be which him. team? The U.S. team, U.S. Okay. national team. Is there a player that you like? You yeah. know what? I'd, I'd want to. He'd be on my list of someone I want to cook for. Uh, if they go to the semifinal, I cook for the whole team <laughs> with joy. Uh, but if they go, if they're not going to the second round, I'm mad at all of them <laughs> because they have the. They. I mean, of course. It, it's got a lot of luck how you, yeah. you know, but they, you guys know, they have a shot. Yeah, they really yeah, have a shot. Sure. And they get lucky. Soil, yeah. yeah. And they got the Copa America this summer yeah. to kind of get like a, a dry run of what it's like mm -hmm. having a major tournament on, on a home soil that all your best players are in. If you also generational, those guys can all be 26, 27 at yeah. that point, which is also rare, right? With the experience of playing in a yes. World Cup already yeah. as opposed to last World Cup where there was 90% yeah. was their first World Cup. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. To build off of what he asked, if you could make a best 11 of players you'd like to cook for that you haven't, who, who would be on that list? Oh my God, I mean, <laughs> I mean. I thought you were gonna say a best 11 of people you have <laughs> cooked for. Uh, you know, you, oh, I yeah. mean, I like probably might. Yeah, do that. All right, okay. do who best you want to cook for. Who you cook for? Uh, Oprah is that right there. Yeah. <laughs> Oprah's right there, yeah. of course. Um, Obama. Hey know, man, keep and Michelle, and, and Michelle, of course. Okay. Uh, Clinton is most, one of the most fun. Uh, and a bunch of, a bunch of, you know, Madonna, like a bunch of, bunch of. Hey, oh, man. 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 I didn't cook for Pele, I was just a kid. Oh, no, okay. I did cook for Pele, he came back actually. See? In the yes, oh, he God. did. He came back. Someone read their notes. Yes, <laughs> yeah, you're right, you're right, Pele. Um, uh, you know, I gotta say, uh, Harry Belafonte, because he did so much for the oh, movement wow. of Africa and, and, uh, it was, my mom never cared about celebrities. She's like, just call me once you meet Harry Belafonte. <laughs> He's such a handsome man. I'm like, 
I'm 26. I'm not going to tell him like, he's <laughs> handsome. But I, I took a picture and sent it to my mom. Do you get nervous cooking for people of that stature? No. I, the logistics makes me nervous because it's all about safety, right? When you have a president in your building or you have, you, you know, like it's all about the logistic. How do we get them into the location? How do we get them out? Um, how do we make sure the staff is not taking pictures? Do you like, close the, the restaurant down for, the, for people? Yeah, or well, we go to places where we have to go to. And it's all about okay. logistics because the food, I know I got the food. Like, that's not. Like, it's like, you're never worried can about you, that. Were you nervous when you shoot a penalty? Then you shouldn't take the penalty. Like, it's like, yeah. you're not. You know what I mean? How do you decide what to make for them? Talk to their person, like, are So they it's on, based on what they like? Well, it's also based on allergies. Okay. Other than a diet. Why they're trying. So when I got the opportunity to do Barack Obama's first state dinner, you know, they were new in the, in, in the White House. Michelle Obama's just built her uh, big garden. The state dinner was for this prime minister out of India. So for me, it was like, OK, she's trying to have a conversation about healthier cooking. Let's do a majority vegetarian meal. You know, the, uh, he was vegetarian, not, uh, not uh, Obama, but Prime Minister Singh. So you always want to make it so the person you're cooking for is comfortable, right? right. Like, if you come, you know, I would think about how do we throw some igusi? How do we make, you know, how do we do a nod to your culture? Okay. Do you know what I mean? If Clint would come, maybe it would be a little bit around barbecue or something. You want the person in center to be comfortable. I'm hosting right now. Mm. And uh, that's not the moment to go on this sort of esoteric route. Right. You know what Speaking I mean? of all the food, am I right in thinking that you brought something with you? I brought a little something. You yeah. did? What'd yeah. you bring us? Uh, just a little chicken and waffles from our store hey, down the street. Yeah, here. Oh. Some chicken waffles. Yes, yes, yes. So this is from your Harlem spot? No, this is from a Newark spot. We got a store like 20 oh, minutes away from okay. here. All right. Thank What's you so much. Much. How are you? Uh, all right, all oh, right. Oh, this is fancy Smiling chicken there? and waffles. Mm. Yeah. Wait, you're not eating? Isaiah, I see you. <laughs> I have no lunch? Yes. What, what's missing? Oh, I got, I got, I got the grand finale. Thank, thank you. Thank, OK, <laughs> great. Uh, well, when you guys, one of the things that I always thought about in terms of soccer players is, you know, when Ronaldo came to Man U, he brought in a chef. He, he changed kind of the game how people would think did, about sorry? food. Ronaldo did. Right. Uh, you know, I think in Tottenham there was a Spanish coke that pulled all the white bread, for example, and it just changed how you, you guys would eat. Who was right? that? Uh, um, I don't, I was only there for a year, so, but the thing that they did was they also would do, like, blood work, and then whatever you're missing in terms of, like, protein shakes mm -hmm. or the shakes that you had mm -hmm. after training, everybody was different. And then, like you said, meal Bill, prep, yeah. when you go to lunch, about portion size yep. and what each player should kind of have, yeah. what you're missing in your diet from your blood work and stuff like that. Yeah. Do you have no's? Is white bread like a no for you? No, but it, it, with, with each person, you'd really got to know where they are, right? Uh -huh. And so, obviously, if you can get a, a better grain, you do that. You know what I mean? I, I don't think if I would be top athlete, there's no way I would eat that. Oh, because really? it's just you can't at that moment. It's good, know? huh? I know me some chicken. Really good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Nice. My first six months at Hammerby, I didn't know how to cook. Still don't know how to cook. Yeah. So you had the form <laughs> so you had the foreman grill. Thank you. No, uh, so <laughs> Okay now. Thank you. Oh wow. You got the Damn. big plate. You yeah, got yeah. the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> yeah. You got the Statue of Liberty, bro. As a young American no, kid, no, 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 I would never eat that much. <laughs> no, no, Give it to one of them. Charlie, no, Charlie's your yeah. man. <laughs> no, no. And it was Smith. Come no, on, no, 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 I can't, no, you can't you give can. me the biggest one. You got one. it, though. Um, I, I would go <laughs> to You took my stuff. Did I? No, no, I'm just no, kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I, would just, I would eat fast food. Yeah. Oh, wow, no. Yeah. You don't have to, sweet. Kebab, fries. Yeah, yeah, OK. You know, the easy food. And six months in, the fans called the coach and said, I was always eating at this spot. And no. They told on you. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, oh, the, but in the end, it, it Were you in shape, though? Me. Yeah, I was still in shape, but they just said it's, I wasn't scoring goals. Yeah. And so and you you're looking down at different results and <laughs> reasons why I'm not doing that. And so the coach called me in, Tony Gustafson. He said, all right, you just got to gotta stop yeah. eating junk food. Well, so what did you do? Did you learn to cook? No, the chef at the, at the club would make me lunch and dinners to bring home. Mm -hmm. Who eats slow? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm talking. Get, get out of here. Nothing. That don't count.
Can I say, I'm, I'm disappointed at myself right now. What? I was so excited to come here. The first thing I wanted to do was, to, I, I, I just wanted to, say, I, I was looked forward to this moment, right? And then I come here and you ask about food, you ask about Ethiopia, and I go soft. And going soft is not me. I want to come back and it's like, my favorite soccer comment, I would say, all time, mm. is Clint. Oh, I know it, what it is. Oh, it's so good. It's so, good. <laughs> so I just want to know, where were you? Why did you say it? And what was going on in your head? You know, you don't know what where you I'm said from, to Mike. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, I'm like, where are you? What statement? What's happening? Yeah, I mean, we just, doing the Champions League coverage the other day, it kind of brought back the memories. But home game yeah. at, at the cottage, first uh, Man City, Micah Richards. Yeah. We, there have been a few, like, you know, challenges that we've gone into. And then that was just kind of one that kind of, went over the edge a little bit, and then, I don't know, man, that was just, that, that was the kind of thing I always kind of re, re, yeah, yeah, yeah. reverted back to was like, you don't know where I'm from, like, yeah. you don't know what I've been through. Yeah. Like, when I listen to music, I listen to a lot of Texas rap, yeah. but you talk, we talked earlier about Bun, Bun B, B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and, you know, listen to the rap of, of yes. where I came from and the struggle that I went through. So, like, when I got into like altercations, it's like, man, you don't, you don't know what yeah. I've been through. Yeah, you, don't yeah. know, you don't know what the struggle was. So, yeah. it's kind of like, I'll, let, I'll, let I'll him know. Let him know, like, so we good. can take this wherever we got to take it type of deal. So, oh uh, but it, it was good to, talk, to laugh about that with Micah. And it, <laughs> it's crazy that, like, certain things catch on. I would have yeah. never thought that story would have, you know, caught on and, and resonated with fans as, as much as it did. And uh, it's just kind of cool to look yeah, back and la it. laugh at those situations that, like, you know, you kind of took a little bit more seriously. But it seriously. shows grit and also shows yeah. on the plate, like, you, You're like, not going back down. No, yeah. and you. this is also why you played in, played in the Premier League. Like, yep. because you're tough. Like, One of that, that challenge. Yes, exactly. Test yourself against you like the best. having people with that kind of attitude in your kitchen, Yes, though? absolutely. You do. Like, you go to battle, and, and opening a restaurant is one of the hardest things you can do, right? Like, you, you, you put all this money into something, you so what's build the, a team. What's the success rate? Like, you have to, like, not many pe people make it past five years in a yeah. restaurant, right? Yeah, no, Is that true? A, yeah, it's very difficult. So to do it, and then the reviewers come, whether it's, like, newspapers, bloggers, or just, like... Critics. Critics, right? So, it, so you are exposed, and you're thinking about this all the time, and that mentality, that attitude, I'm like, we're not going to give up. You have no idea what I had to go through, so I can relate to that, and I just think it's... Um, it's a strong message that I think a lot of people, because it talks about dreams, it talks about commitments. It's, there's so much in there, and you can kind of, I can relate to that. What are, the, what are the rules around phone, cell phones, while you cook in the kitchen? You know, like, they, so yeah. if someone had their cell phone, what would you say to them? Would you say, it I'm going to take they that? Be there. It's not, nothing because then that chef might clap back at you and say, I'd like to see you try. But like it's never, it's, like, it's never gonna. Because if you want somebody no, with the no. clip mentality, oh. Yes. Hey, oh. you be careful. He's, he's trying to bring up a story. Hey, careful what you hey, ask for. This guy, he, he's kind of, he's, he's, he's kind of subtly one. trying to. He's, <laughs> hey, hey, yeah, good, good, hey good. he's trying to sneak diss me, yeah. right? Yeah. You're not supposed to have your phones yeah. around the chin. <laughs> no, you're not. My wife was pregnant at the oh, time. Okay, that's a different. And it was like our third kid. Yeah. So it was like. Family is, is, yeah, is the most important thing, yeah. right? And it was like a coach trying to implement the rules, oh but at the, the same time, it's yeah. like, it's not well, Peter family Novak. comes first to me. Yeah. So he's trying to sneak oh this. Oh, my God. No, no, he talked about how he wasn't in the kitchen. Yeah, 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 yeah. But at the same time, if I had a good enough reason, like, yeah, my wife's but, pregnant, you yeah, might let that this? slide. Yeah, no, but, I would. Hey, if I'm like Charlie, yeah. Instagram straight flexing, with yeah. my, I'm doing my yeah. profile, yeah, doing yeah, my yeah. story, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you got to go home, bro. Yeah, I see right? that, no, I see, now, 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 that's, 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 you're right. Yeah, that's, you're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah, there's a there. Have have you, you ever, know what you had when you were doing it. But Marcus, he's forgetting the main thing, because he came on the bus. <laughs> he looks right and he goes, why don't you tell a story Where's my phone? You see my phone? And he's saying it loud. Ah, no, but he's been saying it the whole time before we even got on the bus. He's checking everyone. Yeah. He can't, Mo, you see my phone? I said, Hey, nah. he, and he said it loud, so even the coach yeah. is, hey, who see my phone? Yeah. But in that tone, like, I'm yeah. going to fight you. And then the coach comes and he's like, oh. I got something like this. Yeah. And he's still doing the, hey, you see my phone? Yeah. And then Texas. that's when he said, Texas. you better give that back. Yeah. No, his, his exact words were, because he dangled the phone in front of him, 
and Clint went to reach for it, and <laughs> he pulled it back. <laughs> so that took Clint coach, to a... Uh, coach had no co chance. Co coach yeah. had banter, I'll tell you what, Coach had banter. <laughs> yeah. that, that took Clint to another level. You know, like that commercial where the guy has the dollar on the rod and reel? <laughs> That's kind of how I felt he did, but he was like, ooh, ooh. Is Coach still in the game? Or this is why he retired. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think he retired. No, but I get it. That, that's a very special moment. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. What, what was your favorite era of Arsenal? Oh, Wenger, like, uh, with the uh, Invincible. Invincible. The Invincibles, the 2000s? Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's incredible. Like, because it was such a new way for the Premier League also to, like, with, we, you know, with Mourinho and Wenger, it introduced, it's always been Fergie Land, right? And then these guys come around and just changes everything. Mm. Like, looking at Arsenal from like, you know, laterals, like they didn't even have that before. It's like, like, pullbacks running up and down, up and down. England never played like that. Uh, with midfielders like Sesk and like, they could hold the ball and really... Change the game. Yeah, but in England also, and it's still people like Vieira, that's like, it's still rough. And then it's still, you have someone like Seth that it's like slows everything down and obviously at the different All right, region. time out, time out. You mentioned all these icons, mm. but how is Freddie Lundberg your favorite player on this team? Because he's Swedish! He's yeah, but brainer. still! Yeah, but, but it's you a know. -brainer. It's just a it's Swede. Swedish, yeah, yeah, but still. Like that, you root for your Swede. Henri Vieira. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but if you have like a personal you root for your Swede. Like... I was also in awe that a Swedish person can even hang with these guys. I mean, not just hang, he played, played you know, which was incredible. We never had, we've had one guy in the late 80s, early 90s that played for Liverpool, like was captain, but there's not been a lot of Swedish that actually was dominant forces in the Premier League. So that was incredible to watch him do it. And Slatan came in an era when almost Slatan was done, right? So yeah, Sweden watched him, support him, it's United, but it wasn't like when he was in Milan or when he played for Inter in Milan, when everybody, like it's, you know, Slatan, Slatan transformed football in Sweden, right? Like. People traveled to see Slatan. You know. Is he loved in Sweden? Of course, of course, by half of the country. <laughs> and the other half? No, they just don't get it. Like he rubs Slatan the wrong way. represents. It's it's almost like do you like Beyonce? It's beyond music. It's beyond soccer. It's, you know, like, like a cultural icon. It's a culture because he comes from an immigrant background, so he represents more than sports. Mm. You can't look at Slatan as a sports figure. Gotcha. He doesn't, it's like saying it's Federer, it's Nadal and Federer tennis player, yeah, but they're like, I, like Messi is beyond being uh -huh. a soccer player. Where's Henrik Larsson in that? Every Swede loves Hen Henrik because he was a great soccer player and stayed kind of in that pocket of being a great soccer player, didn't really speak outside. Uh, so they like, they love, he brought them so many great moments. Uh, but Slatan is on a different, operates on a different level. And, and Henrik has put himself out there too in a very difficult thing. Like he's been a coach, which is very difficult. Um, his son is playing at a high le level. So Henrik is, is in a day-to-day -day conversation on it. You don't see Slatan. Slatan doesn't even live in Sweden, you know what I mean? But for kids of immigrant background, he's, he's everything because he gave them identity in a way that it's, it's, it's hard to explain. It's beyond soccer. Also a dream that maybe you can do that. Exactly, and you come from a very di difficult, rough uh, background and still made it. Um, you know, he's, a, he's an investor in Hamabu now, you're yeah, all club. Yeah. But you know, so he's beyond, it, it's also too soon, right? He just stopped. So give it 10 years and Slatan will come back a little bit more probably and do some more charitable things, hopefully. And then I think it's going to get on that more loved scene. Right now, he's, his mentality is still a player, mm -hmm. you know? Has, have you cooked for him? Uh, no. I met him, but I'm, I'm not in the restaurant. Outside the restaurant. What would you want to cook for him? Uh, well, he comes from this, uh, Yugoslavia, so probably like uh, from Yugoslavia, so probably chibapchiche, which is a you one... You just know food from everywhere. I mean, that's my job, this is my... This is, my... Uh, is it though? Do all chefs know food from everywhere? No, that... I don't care about all chefs, I care about this. Oh. No, 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 no. You have to be. I worry about this. Okay. Yeah, that's the only way you can stay on top. Well, so how do you stay on top? Like, what's next for you? What are you looking so to do traveling. next? Are you one of those people that's always thinking about, what am I building next? Yeah, I mean, you, 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 we built something out of nothing, and the only way to stay on top of that is to work on it every day and try to figure out how do you improve, how do you get better every day. That's what we work on every day.
How have you evolved as a chef? Uh, through traveling, through my staff, through my experiences, evolving as a person, having a family, but traveling, challenging myself. Like, we're just open metropolis at the former site where 9-11 happened, right? So it's very emotional to New York and to us. But to build this restaurant in this very, very emotional place, how can you build a great experience there? We just want to become a great New York destination. And, um, you know, how do you evolve Red Rooster, something we've been working on for 12 years, it's been in business for 12 years, and how do you, you know, for me it's important to champion people that look like me and people who did not get chances. You know, like at Hav Mar, all our leadership team are women of color. Because when I started the game, there was no position for black people in the industry, right? Although black people and people of color did a lot of the work, we didn't have access to money, we didn't have ownership. So I'm like, as, the, as a leader, you're like, I can't just sit on the side. It's like, oh, I'm gonna make sure I'm good. That, it doesn't work like that. You have to open up the door. It seems like you've done a great job of picking people to, because you can't be at all these places no. at one time. No. So it seems like you've had to be a good judge of character to pick people to kind of be captains of those different locations to be so successful that you could have so many. Yeah. What was the trick in terms of that interview process and, and, and finding the, the, the people for the right fit? I think it's aspire or inspire, right? People have to, you have to build a vision and a dream and aspire towards something that is larger than just this. In Harlem, it was, it was a goal was to connect food, music, and culture. Or downstairs, we have our music venue, we do that. Upstairs is really about celebrating the African American culture. The West Side, in, 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 in where Hav is, art has always been in Chelsea. So, how do we bring artist community in? And then we added this culture piece of we want this restaurant to be run by women of color. That, for me, coming out of the pandemic, that was just the right thing to do. You, because looking at the industry, um, just like soccer, it's very, very male dominated, and, and the, the teams, and the, now people understand that you have to change it. And, Be inclusive. And, and people like yourself have been transformative in, in many positions in soccer and inspire other people, which is important, right? If we don't change, it's not gonna happen. You have to push, you have to change. What are you proudest of? Um, to been in business in New York City for 25 years, which is a very challenging thing. Uh -huh. um, but also that my mom saw that something that her mom, that we did at the household, just practice on food, is something that I'm 40 years later can work off, you know, and, and provide for my next genera for the next generation, so. Cooking must have taken you so many incredible places, yeah. not just like geographically, but just in life, right? Yeah. If, you could, if you could choose the gifting that God gave you, would it be football or would it be cooking? To do what you guys have done, I think is the most incredible, must be the most incredible feeling. Go on the field, battle against the best in the world. You'd be done at 30 something. No, they're not done, they're evolving. <laughs> they, they're they're <laughs> evolving, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, hey, we're kicking. Nice. Yeah. You said we yeah. cooked. Yeah. It's just something, I mean, we just talked about it, right? You yeah. played against, you know, Messi and stuff like that. That must have been, I mean, I couldn't even talk about it. It's like hard to understand either. Yeah, but yeah. You, you sat here humbly, yeah. like, Whispering Madonna, yeah, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Oprah, yeah. Oprah, yeah. Oprah. Yeah, yeah. With Oprah, like, what are yeah, you talking yeah. about? Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. the yeah. the the list of people yeah. that you've had the pleasure to cook for is incredible. Yeah. So right? you've cooked for Obama twice, though, right? A couple of times. Yeah. So, in those moments, what what's that relationship like? Like, are you able to have a dialogue with him? Has that relationship grown since you've cooked for him a couple of times? You just have to understand, you have to be respectful of where they're at, right? They sit on information. He might have to, at any given moment, he might have to leave and actually deal with the world, right? So it's not about, it's actually been easier to deal with, a, with Michelle because she's been able to be more social than when he was the president. He's like, at one second, something can change, you gotta go. There's nothing to discuss, right? So you can never have that cat, you have to respect the position. I remember, uh, we did an event after he was president, and of course he was much more, uh, he was calmer, you know, he was like just in a, he didn't wear a tie, he was more kind of, uh, Just enjoying yeah, it Yeah, he was enjoying it more, and I get it, because that moment, that heartbeat, like there's so many different things going on at the same time, so for me it's more about being super respectful of where does I need to be, it's 40 minutes, it's not 41, it's like you just have to like 
time everything. So it's more a job of precision and w what's their next step and what is it, how can we provide. So this is, this is truly a service, right? You just got to do that. Uh, it's not a casual interaction. But what's the know? difference between that and, a, and an Oprah then? I mean, Oprah got more time. She so got time. <laughs> she got time. You got a Toyota. You got a Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't need Toyota. But whatever. <laughs> like, you know, it's different, you know, especially if she's there with Gail, because then you know I know Gail better, because you can, you can hang with Have you, you ever know? been hurt by somebody's reaction to your food? Like a critic. I get oh, I just meant like anybody, anybody person. you could for. I, I, I just I wonder if there was like a big like critic that okay. came and wrote an article or something. Because like, there's always people that are writing articles yeah. and talking trash about you when, you, when you're playing. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's, it's the good stuff you don't really listen to is bad. held on to that. What's up? <laughs> he ain't let it go. I went, but he ain't let it go. No, I mean, it's just something that comes with the job. No matter what you do, it's, it's, right. it's, just, yeah. it's just part of the job, right? Yeah. And it's like motivates you. People are different to be like, all right, I'm gonna show you. And do you pay attention to it? Like we, like we, see every article. Right? I mean, clearly they don't pay attention to what's <laughs> written about them. So it's like, you know, what did Lando really say? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But I mean, I, I think that again, I don't want to be paranoid, but so much of our cultures mm. are put out there. A black culture is put out there against the mainstream, and we get judged by people who don't know what a jollof is, who don't know what a goose is. So if we're trying to tell our stories, it's very complicated because the majority of writers uh, maybe know about Italian food or maybe they know about French food. And then they're going to detail, talk about uh, what we're doing. That is a very hard thing because you don't have the chance to go back and forth or give context on what you're trying to do, right? Mm. So it's, everything is not about race and culture, but when you are a minority in a majority society, you never, is rarely get a chance to give context to what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And it happens in sports, it happens in music, it happens in food. So um, that's frustrating because when someone is judging on something that they actually don't know, you know they don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, because they, they never play pro, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's good, that's good. Exactly. You're, you are who you are now, right? Mm -hmm. Restaurants yeah. everywhere, as you said, if we need to travel somewhere, mm -hmm. we got a restaurant got to you. go to, bet. If you can look back now, because I feel like we always get asked this question, like if you can look back on your younger version yeah. of yourself, like your first year entering the world of, of being a chef and you can give yourself advice, like what are you saying to yourself? I think is, I, it's, it's probably still linger still, it's enjoying the moments, right? When you're young and you're coming up, you, you're working so hard, so fast. So the first 10 years for me is just a blur, right? Uh, it was before you had, not for cell phones, but before like you had um, uh, cameras on your cell phone. And I didn't take pictures of anything. So I just like, damn, I wish I had more memories. Like I have them in my head, right. but I just wish I enjoyed those moments a little bit more. And uh, yeah, enjoying the moments and slowing down. And you know, for me, it was a, it's always been a trade off. I did most of my work abroad. So it was hard for me to connect with my Swedish family. So they have, they've been on my journey and mentored me and come to my places, but everything has happened, mostly has happened in America. So there's a lot of sort of pure family time that I've missed, right? And that, that when you get older, you think about that, damn, I missed birthday, funerals, weddings, yeah. a lot of that stuff. It's hard to live yeah. with your feet across yeah, two continents, it right? It's really hard. Yeah. 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 Um, do you have a restaurant in Disney World? Because it's the only place that Mo goes outside of Las Vegas. Oh. Soon come. No, I don't, I don't, I don't. Wait, don't. you said you got one in Vegas. Yeah, we just have Street Bird in Vegas, okay. but um, we're working on something else. So, yeah, so, so, so. We'll, we'll, yeah. yeah, we'll be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Congratulations Thank on all you. your incredible success. It's Listen, fantastic this to hear about. This is success. This was, like I said, when I saw Charlie T, I was like, this is the show I have to be on because I love football, we I love soccer it. so much. And uh, I, I, I have so much respect and, and, and envy of what you guys have done because that's my first love. But uh, admiration, I just, I just love it so much. So. But we have a lot of respect too for the way, the way you represent and the way you Thank give you. back. That's, yes. It's hugely admirable. We appreciate you again. Thank, Thank you so, so much for your time. So good to meet you. Care for the mentions. Thank you, sir. Oh, appreciate you, man. <laughs> Damn, appreciate Thanks for the guys. food, man. Absolutely. Really good. Yeah. Thanks to my sleeve, I do. Yeah. yeah man. Appreciate you, man. Yes, Thank sir. you. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Drink up and we'll be one of the
a sneak peek of next week's episode of Kicking It with Andres Cantor. Nico's engagement. Uh -huh. So Friday night after he gets engaged, I see the Instagram post of everybody that is putting pictures up, right? Of them getting engaged, her showing the ring and this and that. So I get home, I post the picture, so proud of you, son. 10 minutes into it, I get a call. Dad, get that photo down. Everyone else is posting your, your pictures. Yeah, but everyone is not you. And please see if uh, anybody from CBS saw the, your story. <laughs> so, what? what? Why? Oh, no. Because this was going to be a surprise for, I think, the Champions League crew. Oh, I don't know okay. what he meant, <laughs> but I said, OK, I obliged. I took it down. <clears throat> and then I, I called them up the next day and I said, you know, this is going to go on my biography. My son made me take down <laughs> one of my most proudest and happiest moments in my life because he had sold his exclusive to CBS <laughs> <and> yes, <laughs> or whatever. He said, uh, Pete, hold oh, on. Okay. Uh, is it all right if I can propose on this day at this time? Oh, man. <laughs> I had to get clearance first. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Thank you for watching. If you liked this episode of Kicking It, then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to enjoy more raw and unfiltered content from me and the boys.